Hey guys, Mikoshi here. Today I'm going to be talking about Magic Fine as a general guide. This will not be a build video. I'm going to try to start making guides on themes in the game that aren't build related, such as, well, this one, Magic Find, and I might start doing also crafting videos. I was thinking of doing a general guide in crafting. So if you guys appreciate and like the way I made this Magic Find uh, general guide, please let me know if you guys would be interested for a crafting video. So for this video, we're pretty much going to go over all you need to know about Magic Find. This will not go super in depth into everything, but I will touch pretty much all the main aspects and important points you need to know about your Magic Find. I think it's important to have a good Magic Find guide as a general guide because Magic Find is pretty much a, the biggest noob bait in Path of Exile. A lot of players, they start doing Magic Find thinking they will start dropping mirrors upon mirrors. But often what happens is they maybe follow a bad build. They might follow a bad strategy. They might not understand the strategy fully. They might not understand how their build, why their build is not functioning well. Um, and all there's so many mechanics in Magic Find that you need to understand before jumping into it. And it's better to know it. It's better to learn from a video than actually learning from losing time and wasting currency trying to make your magic find strategy or build work. So this is what I'm going to try to achieve with this video is that you have a pretty much unclouded enlightened vision of magic find and then you can choose your build your strategy with the knowledge needed. And even if you want to actually take the decision of going into magic find. So the table of content for this video, we're going to be talking about what is magic find item quantity item rarity areas juicing what content is best for magic find strategies used by magic find players, the play styles, whether you want group solo, the build archetypes that you want, if you're playing in a group, standard versus league, because those are constructed very differently, loot filters, what to expect when you go into magic find, when should you go in, etc, etc. We're going to be talking about magic find builds that I think are the best and the most popular. And then finally, we're going to be talking about expectations uh, not expectations, sorry, the uh, uh, frequently asked questions about Magic Find. So first, let's talk about what is Magic Find. If you've played RPGs, you must have heard of it. It's pretty much an archetype that exists in all of them, and Path of Exile is not an exception. Magic Find characters have buffs, which increases their chance of getting better loot when slaying enemies. They're basically just lucky um, if you want to think it that way, they're characters that spec into luck and that luck is going to be for loot. So our goal here is going to have a greater quantity of items that will drop as well as a rarity per monster that we kill. In Path of Exile, magic find builds are often going to be described with their quantity and rarity. You're going to see IIQ and IIR. IIQ is increased item quantity and IIR is increased item rarity. Those are going to be the modifiers that increase the quantity and the rarity of the, the loot that you get with your build. So for example, I talk about my Tornado Shot character. I can say my Tornado Shot has a 200% quant and 600% rarity. When you see those numbers, you're going to know what type, of, uh, what type of build it is. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it really high in terms of quantity or not? And well, for this example, 200% quant and 600% rarity is very powerful in terms of magic find. However, when we're talking about the actual power level of the build, it's often going to be described with the amount of percentage of delirium the build can do. Often it's going to be solo. And if it's impossible to do solo, well, then it's going to say in duo, but usually it's going to be solo. For example, a build has 200% quant and 600% rarity like that tornado shot, but it can only do 200% uh, 20% delirium. Well, you know it's very good. It's a very juicy MF build. However, if you want to do the real content, which is going to be, for example, 100% Delirium, then you know it's not that good. However, if you see somebody with a 100% or a 150% item quantity and 400% rarity, but he can do 100% Delhi, this means that the build, although in terms of magic fine quantity, is not as good, the power of that build is a lot stronger. An increase in item quantity is exactly what magic find players wish. This will affect the number of items monsters will drop when they are slain by you. 
This stat is very powerful because you will receive more items every time you kill and that gives you more loot per time and content that you do. That's very good because compared to an average player, you will simply receive more currency than them just by simply playing and killing monsters. This increase in item quantity will give you a higher chance of receiving currency, divination cards, and items. However, it is important to note that the drop rate of some items cannot be modified by the player's increase in item quantity, such as maps, chests, so all the items that are in chests, strong boxes, and boss drops. When we're talking about boss drops, we are talking about uh, bosses where you need to use something to get there, meaning it's not a map boss. It's going to be, for example, the Exarch. Uh, if you kill the Exarch with an MF character, there is no higher chance of getting more items than if you kill them with a normal character. Item quantity does not have a limit, meaning you can scale it as much as you want. However, it is important to note that increase in item quantity has diminishing returns, which are quite strong. As well, there is going to be a balance you're going to have to find between going magic find, so more quantity, and your clear speed. Item quantity does not have a linear effect on the drop rates. The lower the item quantity you have, the bigger the increases are when you upgrade. However, the more item quantity you have, those increases in item, increase item quantity, will not give as much as an effect that if you did it at a lower scale. So simply put, when you reach a high enough amount of item quantity, it is basically useless to spec into more of it. As you can see here, this is the graph of what the increase in item quantity does compared to the actual amount of items that drop. So for the first 10% increase item quantity that you get in your build, so you go from nothing to 10%, you actually receive 8.45% more items. However, once you reach 100% quantity and you wish to have an additional 10%, so from 100 to 110, you only get 2.25 more, which is basically four times less or nearly four times less. You will then after uh, need to decide whether or not you wish to continue investing in the item quantity or invest elsewhere into your build. An important thing to note and uh, that often people have wrong is that increase in item quantity does not mean increase in items that actually drop. For example, a magic find character that has 100% item quantity will not receive twice as many items as somebody who has 0% item quantity. As we can see here with the uh, graph, and with the stats, at 100% increased quantity, you actually receive 56% more items. At 200% quantity, you receive 77% more items. At 300% quantity, you receive 84% more items. It is pretty much basically impossible to receive twice as many items as a normal character with item quantity. Scaling increase in item quantity is very good. However, there will be a point where scaling it more would be detrimental, and sometimes scaling it just a bit might actually be detrimental. There's always the debate between having more item quantity or more speed. If I do the content and take more time but get more items, is it better than if I do more content quickly and get more items that way? For example, let's say you have 50% more items, however, you take twice as much time to do a map. It might not actually be a good decision to go magic fine because if you do twice the content speed, you will actually receive more items than if you went for the magic fine with a simple 50% more item. Although yes, we do spend a lot less in terms of maps per hour, which means our investment into our maps is lower if we go MF than if we do not, uh, it will actually be often better to be quicker at doing maps and their content than actually getting more items. The order of importance, speed is first place. Magic find is second, which means you must prioritize speed before going for item quantity. This is true for magic find, and this is true for anything you wish to farm in this game. Now, you could go for a bit less speed and big increases in magic find. However, often when you wish to add magic find to your character, you lose a lot of speed. So it is important for you to be able to be quick enough and still have magic find. Item rarity 
uh, is and the secondary stat when we look at magic find characters. Some items, not all, have rarities, and they go by this order. Normal, magic, rare, and unique. Normal is the white, magic is the blue, rare is the yellow, and unique is going to be the orange. And if you're not a Path of Exile player, it's kind of like the legendary tier. Although we know, well, some don't, but the strongest items in the game are crafted mirror tier rare items. However, they will probably never drop perfectly made by killing enemies, but you must craft them. However, uniques, well, they never change and they can be sold depending on which for quite a big price. Item rarity does not affect gems, currency, divination cards, as none of them have a rarity. So people think that with more rarity, I might have a chance of getting more divines instead of chaos. It is not the case. For that, you must need more quantity. There isn't as much research on item rarity as there are in item quantity, but item rarity is not something to put aside as something unimportant. Some magic find strategies solely invest in item rarity and drop a crazy amount of uniques per map. Uniques are divided in multiple tiers, six of them actually, from tier five, which is the lowest, to tier zero, which is the highest. They have a odd of dropping, tier five being pretty much a, just a bit more than half items that drop, while tier zero actually have 0.005% chance of dropping. Tier zero uniques are very valuable, such as mage bloods and headhunters. Specking into item rarity will give you a higher chance of dropping a unique, as well as a higher chance of dropping a higher tier of unique. That's why we love item rarity. There are a lot of conflicting views about the sweet spot in item rarity. Some people say 300% is enough, some others say that it's 500, 600, and some say we should never stop scaling. However, I think that item rarity is slightly less important than item quantity and a lot less important than speed. So in terms of priority, you, may, you must have speed, item quantity, and then item rarity. Areas can also be modified with increasing quantity and rarity. Those modifiers obviously aren't gonna come from your character, but how you juice your maps. Juicing is going to be you making your content harder, but more rewarding. Although we would like to farm content that is affected by our magic find character, some magic find players will actually run mechanics whose reward are not affected by magic find, such as strong boxes. These mechanics, however, have a strong synergy with compasses and scarabs, as well as the area modifiers that increase the quantity and rarity of mobs uh, that are spawned in those said mechanics. And the formula for area mod, so the when items drop, they have a chance of getting a higher rarity and they have more quantity. And that formula, we think, it is not explicitly said, sadly, and those are research, is a multiplicate, multiplicative with our stats as a magic find character. So we have our magic find character, as we can see here, the player quant minus the uh, diminishing return penalty, and it is multiplied by the area item quantity, the mob item quantity, the party bonus, and the delirium bonus. There are multiple ways of juicing your map, and this list is a small list of what you can do. The goal with juicing your map is pretty simple. Get the greatest number of monsters possible and then kill them. And in our case, it's going to be kill them with your magic find build. The most basic way of juicing a map is by using something called chisels. Chisels are used to augment the quality of a map. Per every percentage of quality we have on our map, we have a single percent in quantity of item found. The maximum quality of a map when we chisel them is 20%. Chisel on a normal map, so a white map, will bump 5%. On a magic, it's going to be 2% per chisel, and on a rare and unique, it's going to be 1%. So when you're making your maps, try to chisel in the beginning as your first step. Well, your first step is going to be to choose the map and then chisel. Alchemy. To make them rare maps. When your maps are rare, you actually have better increases in quantity, rarity, and monster pack size. As you can see here, this is a normal Crimson Temple. But when I alked it, 
I have more quantity, more rarity, and more pack size. Now we do have that 20% uh, quality. However, when you put your maps rare, you will go way above the 20% um, quantity. Now an important thing to note is when you alk your map, which is the action of putting an alchemy orb on your map, the maps becomes harder. However, we know harder the content, better the rewards. It is important, however, to check when making your map that you do not have mods that can break your build or completely kill you. Some builds who deal, for example, elemental damage cannot run maps that reflect that elemental damage because they will instantly die. Some skills or builds require life regeneration, for example, Righteous Fire, but some maps say that you cannot regenerate life nor mana. So it is important when you alk your maps to actually read the mods and to make sure that you're actually able to run the map. Delirium or Delirious. Most maps will not be delirious and you will actually need to use a delirium orb to increase the percentage of delirium in the map. Every single orb adds 20% to the map up to 100%. The more deliriousness you have in your map, the harder it is and harder by a ton. However, the gain that you have, the rewards from adding Delhi to your map is 100% worth it. Now let's see, at 100% Delhi, you actually have 50% more item quantity that is pretty much equal to 100% increase in item quantity for you. For you. Uh, because as we know, more is just a multiplication, right? At 100% increased quantity, you actually have 56% more quant. So just having 100% Delhi gives you that initial 100%. As well, as we've seen when we try to reach 200% increased quantity, we only go up to 77%. But think about it. If you have 100% quantity with your MF and then you add 100% Delhi, you actually just have, you actually gain more than if you would have added 100% increase item quantity on your character. So this is very strong. However, the monsters in 100% Delhi become completely strong and completely broken. They have a 30% increase in damage and take a lot less damage. Unique monsters take 80% less damage Rare monsters take 90% less damage. Magic and normal monsters take 96% less damage. So when you're trying to run Delhi, you have to make sure your build is able to run it. It is not um, set in stone that you have to run it at 100%. If your build can only run 20%, it is still worth it and you should still go at 20%. And then slowly go up to 100%. Some players will actually never run 100% Delhi and stick to 80% because they are so much quicker that it is better to run 80% Delhi instead of 100% because they can run those maps quicker, which means more items per hour. Corrupting a map uh, can greatly make it harder, but equally rewarding. You will often hear an 8 modded map. What is that? Your friend must have talked about it or you've seen it in global or a YouTuber talked about it. Well, as we know, maps have a limit of six modifiers, but they can go up to eight modifiers if they're corrupted. Also, what's really cool about when they go up to eight mods is their item quantity and item rarity explode. As you can see here, the item quantity went from 66 to 124%. That is huge. Now, there is a possibility of making eight modded maps thanks to beasts, but that can take a lot of time and those are only good usually for group players with huge amount of investment. Usually the strategy is going to be chisel your map, alk your map. If you want to run Delhi, put the Delhi and then you're gonna value your map and check if they're corrupted to eight mods or not. You can also buy them from players. A lot of players, what they do is they bulk sell uh, eight modded maps and you can find them on TFD, different Discord servers, or even on trade or in the game in the trade chat. Sextants. They are strong as hell and they are a must for juicing maps. I know a lot of players kind of get thrown off when they see sextants. I remember the first time I saw sextants, I was quite squared because I didn't understand what it was and it seemed weird, but it is pretty simple. It's actually a currency item. There is the awakened sextant and then there's the elevated sextants and you apply it to your void stones. 
when applied to your void stones, they will give your maps different modifiers. The awakened sextants will give you the next four maps, while the elevated sextant will give you the next 16 maps, the same modifier. Sextant mods can de uh, will be used depending on what you farm, whether it's solo or group, but the best ones are going to be, for example, the Strongbox Quantity and Corruptions, Legion, Beyond, Harbinger, Pack Size, and many, many more. When putting your map in your device, you will see the additional modifiers under the Sextant modifier, and this is going to tell you all the additional modifiers you have thanks to your Sextants. Charged Compass is a currency item that is tradable and it contains an itemized sextant mod. So when you're putting your sextant mods on your void stones, you're going to have to roll until you hit the mod that you wish. However, some people will actually roll those mods on things that are called sec uh, compasses and then they can sell those compasses or you can buy those compasses with the exact mod that you want. And then you use it the same way you use a sextant, you apply it to your void stone and it'll give you that mod. As you can see here, let's say you did not want to roll the strong box mod with your sextants, you can buy a charge compass that has the strong, strong box monsters have a 500% increased quantity. This will save you time, however, it might cost you money. A lot of players actually gain, have currency making method thanks to charge compass. Scarabs are pretty much one of the final steps that you will have to do to juice your maps. Every scarab modifies your map in a certain way. And scarabs actually help you to farm specific type of content. For example, you wish to farm legion, you can actually get legion scarabs and they will guarantee legions in your map. There are four tiers, four tiers of scarabs. It goes from rusted, polished, gilded, and winged. That's the order of rarity and that's the order of cost. The rusted is a lot cheaper than the winged. Sometimes the winged uh, or gilded, sorry, sorry, not the winged, sorry. <laughs> the winged scarab is so expensive that it might be detrimental to actually use it compared to a gilded scarab. So I think if you are not in a group which invests a ton in their maps, it is better to go for the Gilded. The best Scarabs in the game are going to be Divination, Legions, Torment, Reliquary, Breach, Abyss, and Ambush. Influence and maps can greatly help in the juicing of well, in the juicing process. Most players will run either the Exarch or Eater Influence, which you can choose when you're in your map device. You're going to put your map and right above you're going to see those three little round things. The one in the middle is the maven, you don't want to touch that. It's either going to be the left one, which is the exarch or the red, and the eater on the right side, which is going to be the blue or green, depending on what you think this color is, we're not going to debate that. So why do we, you want to actually add influence in your map? For two reasons. First of all, they give more monsters. More monsters equals more kills, more kills equal more items and more rarity. Second of all, they also give things that are called Alters. When you kill monsters in the map, which is influenced by either the Exarch or the Eater, you might come across Alters, and Alters will give you two options. It's often going to be Player's Gain and Eldritch Minion Gain. Both of the time, uh, when you gain something, it's never good. <laughs> so just think about that, it's never good. And so both, they're going to give you drawbacks, but they will give you rewards. For example, Eldritch Minion will give 50,000 armor, which is bad if, for example, you deal strictly physical damage. However, you have a 2.9% chance to drop an additional basic currency item. That could be a Chaos, but it could be a Divine. Same thing, for example, with this Exarch Altar. Nearby enemies gain 100% of their physical damage as extra lightning damage. They're going to start dealing a lot of damage. However, you gain 21% increased quantity of items found in this area, as well as a 27% rarity found in this area. There is a lot of debate whether or not Exarch or Eater is better. In my opinion, I think that going early on for Exarch is best, and then switching for Eater when you min-max more. However, this is going to depend on what you're farming, etc. I don't want to get into it. But both of them are free, 
and both should be added into your maps. So what maps to run? I suggest linear maps with the, mo the minimal time to go from one side to the other. So if it's a maze, it's kind of bad. Some maps are completely open, wide open, and they're actually great, for example, if you have a good clearing build. Turner Shot, Lang Arrow, Blade Vortex, you can pop legions, you can do breach very easily. However, some of them are actually too wide, and going from one side to the other, back in the middle, can actually take more time than if you went into a litter map. Also, some maps have more monster pack size, and as we know, more monsters equals more loot. Now, for which specific map to farm? You're actually going to have to choose the map that offers the best pool of divination card. Pretty much all the loot in this game can drop from any map. But divination card can only be dropped in specific maps. Or whether it's better to say specific divination card can be dropped in specific maps. One of the main reasons Crimson Temple is so popular in 3.23 and the leagues before is because it offers the possibility of getting the apothecary, apothecary and five of them actually gives you mage blood and also the seven years bad luck which can give you mirror shards you cannot drop those two cards in any map you must farm specific maps one of them being crimson temple to actually obtain it now choosing a strategy is going to be one thing However, it's going to be crucial for you guys to stick with it. It might not be very rewarding for the first 50, 100, 500 maps. But it, if it's a good strategy and if it's well documented, so if you do a random strategy that some random ass YouTuber decided to make, it might not work. However, when it is well documented and the math uh, backs it up, it will be rewarding. But I see a lot of players, what they do is they play 50 maps. They say, ah, oh, it doesn't work and they drop it. No, you must do a lot of content and stick to the same strategy a lot to actually see the benefits. So here I've compiled a small list of strategies that I think are going to be the best and most fun. For the super casual player, I added the simple alk and go. You put your chisel, you put your alchemy orb, and you run the map. For this strategy, magic find won't really give you a significant boost per map or even dozens of maps. On the very, very long run, you will have benefits. However, for the super casual, you're often just going to play to enjoy the game and not trying to grind for the most amount of currency. There's also the juicing strategy, which is the most used for magic find players. The goal here will be to have the most amount of mobs in the map with a ton of modifiers. You'll use sextants, big strong boxes, eight modded maps, scarabs, add deli, all of that is quite imperative if you want a juiced up strategy. You're often going to run Crimson Temple because it has the highest chance of dropping the Apothe Apothecary and 7 years bad luck. Now I, I said highest chance, it's not the highest chance, but it gives you the chance of gaining Apothecary and 7 years bad luck. Rarity farming is a strategy where players actually just wish to have the most amount of uniques dropping possible. And those uniques, we want tier 0. So how does this strategy work? They actually use something called Meticulous Appraiser, which is a keystone in your Atlas tree. That keystone transforms all the modifiers of quantity into rarity at 300% of their value. So let's say your map had 100% quantity and 100% rarity. The 100% quantity will transform to 300% rarity and add to the 100% that already existed. So your mob will then go from 100% quant, 100% rarity, to 0% quant, 400% rarity. It is important to note that it will not affect the player's item quantity modifiers. And it is still quite important to have a lot of quantity as a MF player, even if you learn rarity farming, because you have higher chances of dropping items. And the more you have items dropping, the more the rarity modifiers can actually work and transform them into uniques. Ghost busting. That's a magic find strategy that is very highly popular and it is very fun. It added a wind of change to the magic find strategy because it's quite different and it is also fairly recent. The strategy is based upon the node Speaker of the Dead. 
Speak of the Dead makes the tormented spirits in your map, those green looking guys that do nothing except run away, they will actually possess the player and then the player can actually possess monsters. What do possessed monsters do? They drop better loot. So the goal with this strategy is going to be possessed and then you're going to walk into your map, run all around and you're going to possess you yourself other monsters and then you're going to kill them. Often the monsters that you wish to possess or juice up are going to be strong box monsters and then you're going to kill them. How it works is basically it's going to be a tanky and fast character. He's going to go into the map, run around, not kill anything. And then the magic find character comes once everybody is juiced up and everybody dies. Loot conversion. We love them and we know them. Loot conversions happen when mobs convert all of their loot into a specific item. For example, I slay an enemy who was supposed to drop one divine, one body armor, one belt, and then one helmet. Well, if he is a monster that has the loot conversion modifier, he might transform all of those items into either currency. So he might get one divine, one exalt, one chaos, and one alteration orb. Or it might transform all of that into six links. So it'll drop five six links. Those are going to be what are we call loot conversions or loot goblins. This is a picture, I think, from 3.19, where those loot conversion or loot goblins were the biggest uh, and juiciest. However, I don't think this ever happens in 3.23 and after. The, it used to be actually a strategy. So people would actually try to hunt those loot goblins and then they would bring in magic fine colors to drop that amount of currency so this this is something that dropped specifically they hunted for that it's not just a random drop different strategies require different atlas tree but most of the magic find characters have pretty much the same tree why because they're going to use something called the wandering path wandering path disables notable atlas trees a notable atlas passive sorry those are going to be the medium sized so there's the small one the medium and then the big ones the big ones are keystones the medium ones are going to be notables however they will double the effect of small atlas passive skills for some it might be counterintuitive or you might say mm, that might not be good however this is pretty much the best keystone in your atlas tree it gives you so much more currency so much more loot, so much more maps, so much more everything. It basically doubles the effect of your Atlas tree because most of the points you have in your Atlas trees are small ones. Even if you do target medium ones or keystones, pretty much 70% or 80% of your tree is actually made by small passives. So you will be able to double them. This does not disable keystones, which means you can still go for the meticulous appraiser, speaker of the dead, uh, those type of strategies that require a keystone can still be used with Wandering Path. And you can still go for Exarch, Eater Altar Mods, Abyss, Legion, Delhi. Just use the small passives instead. You could totally not use Wandering Path. However, there is a reason why it is so popular. And I think it's going to remain as popular as it is up until the day that it is completely killed. There are many ways of playing Path of Exile. And there are many ways of playing a Magic Find character. The two main decisions you will need to take before making a magic find character is going to be whether or not you wish to play solo or in a group, and if you wish to play in standard or in league. There are a ton of increases in currency, item quantity, and rar rarity when you play in a group, and you will get a ton more loot per map and per kill. However, playing in a party also increases the power of the monsters and the difficulty of the encounters. So it is pretty much mandatory to have aura bots or supporting characters when playing magic find as a group. Usually with an aura bot and a magic find character, it will do the job, but the more the player there is in the map, the more there's benefits in return. Party play is often going to be divided in two categories. There's going to be the magic find carry with the aura bot, and then they're going to use something called XP leeches. XP leeches are players who will simply follow you because you kill a lot of monsters, they get a ton of XP. So they get a ton of XP and you get more loot because they're in the map with you. 
Others will actually go for a more intense group where all of their characters are actually in the purpose of juicing the map. They're going to have an aura bot, damage dealer, magic find color, a curse bot, mana guardian, flask bots. They might have a ghoster. They're going to have a lot of characters that can juice up and help you do the content a lot easier. Playing a group is very nice and you can have a ton of fun with your friends, but it can sometimes be annoying. For example, you have a character that is dedicated to group play and that cannot be played alone. This means if nobody's online or if you wish to play for a small amount of time or even if you wish to play alone, you can't because your character is solely made for group play. As well, don't forget, group play, you must divide the loot. There are so many varieties in group play and many builds can help a lot in them. And so I'm going to be talking about the archetypes that you will often find in those group plays. The first one being the normal magic find carry. This is going to be your classic magic find build. It is often going to be seen when playing in duo or in trio. It deals damage and kills the target and it has good enough magic find stats and DPS. It can be ran as solo or in group play. However, when you're going to be playing in min-max group play settings, you actually don't want to run the normal Magic Find character. The Magic Find portion of that character is going to be replaced by something called the Magic Find Color. The Magic Find Color will call the enemies, which means it requires pretty much no DPS, and all that can be invested into Magic Find. As we know, Magic Find will lower your DPS, so it is important to have a high enough DPS. But Magic Find colors don't need that DPS, which means their item quantity and ra item rarity stats are often going to be a lot higher than normal. However, this build cannot be played outside of group play, as it does require an aura bot probably to survive, and will require a damage dealer before being able to call the enemies. So what is color? Well, it comes from something called Culling Strike. Culling Strike is the property of an attack or anything that deals damage to instantly kill an enemy hit by that attack if their HP is 10% or lower. Let's say my 10% HP is actually 10 billion and you deal a single damage to me. One damage, if you have Culling Strike, it will instantly kill me. The third member of the group is going to be something called the Damage Dealer. It is only used if the magic find character is a color and not a normal carry magic find. He is going to be referred as the carry as he is the one who deals the most he deals all the damage. However, he cannot kill the enemies because he does not have magic find stats. And as we know, magic find stats only work with the player that kills the enemies and not the other members of his group. Which means he needs to deal enough damage for the color to instantly kill all the enemies and we can reap all the benefits of having magic find. So how does one player achieve that? He uses something called southbound, which has the your hits can only kill frozen enemy. And then he's going to use something called secrets of suffering. Cannot ignite, chill, freeze or shock. He's unable to freeze, which means he is unable to kill the enemies. The enemies will be at 1% HP, 1 HP, but because he's not able to freeze them, he cannot kill them. And then the MF color with his juiced magic find stats will one shot all of them. The aura bot is an important character in the group play. Without the aura bot, the group play doesn't work. Its sole purpose is to run the most amount of auras with the highest increase effect to make his or her teammates, completely OP, both offensively and defensively. Some magic find builds cannot function without an aura bot. For example, Duo Sparks, MF Colors, a lot of them can't run magic find content without an aura bot. They would either have not enough damage, or not enough defense, or both. And an aura bot can help in all of those aspects. As you can see here, this is quite a bad magic find build. It has 300,000 DPS per arrow, which is bad. And it only has a 10,000 effective hit pool, which is nothing. However, thanks to an aura bot, it jumps to near seven, uh, a whopping 7.5 million DPS per arrow and a whopping 120,000 effective hit pool. All of that thanks to the aura bot. 
It is important to not be confused with an aura stacker. Aura stackers are builds that stack the most amount of effect in their auras for themselves. And it's a build that can actually play solo. Aura bots are supporting characters, while aura stackers are simply just main damaging builds. And aura stackers do not uh, usually play in magic find groups. It's just a completely different build, just like Tornado Shot, Omniscience Tornado Shot, or Hex Blast, stuff like that. It's just a different build. Mana Guardian is going to be the second best supporting character after the Aura Bot. What does the Mana Guardian do? It basically just stacks the most amount of mana, then transform it thanks to the Guardian Ascendancy into a huge, well, a fuckload amount of energy shield and regeneration rate for all of his party. On a one divine budget, he can actually give 4,000 ES pretty easily in League, and you can go well above 10,000 if you do your character right. That basically means you have a lower chance of dying from one hits, and even that regeneration is so good it helps with damage over time. It is often going to be the character that also has something called the cen Center of Benevolence, which is could be referred as a flask bot as well. What it does is it gives the utility flasks that are non-unique that you have applied to your party members. And they're often going to put the Mana Guardian. Why? Because he doesn't need his flask often, and he's pretty much immortal. A curse bot is basically going to be the opposite of an aura bot. It curses enemy monsters to make them considerably weaker. It is pretty much the elemental resistance shredder. He like destroys enemies monster elemental resistance. However, it is not that useful when the carry of the group actually uses omniscience, which can often give you 100% elemental penetration easily. So curse bot is going to be the third option we're going to think about when we're talking about supporting characters. It can also give temporal chain and curses to monsters which make them slower and deal less damage. However, aura bots and mana guardians are often going to be more than enough to actually make you not die and the monsters are pretty much all going to die instantly because you have the buffs thanks to the aura bot. But if you're going for the full, full MF party, curse bot might be a good choice. The flask bot, it's going to be very rare. And often it's going to be the Mana Guardian who's going, to use, who's going to be used as a Flask Bot thanks to the Century of Benevolence. Uh, but what it does is it basically stacks the Flask effect and then gives it to party members. The Ghoster. Ghoster is going to be used when you use the strategy of the Speaker of the Dead. It goes into map, it possesses the monster, it must be quick and tanky to not die. And he must not kill the monsters. Some ghosters deal zero damage, so they just get in, they possess the monster and go. Some ghosters are actually damage dealing, so they deal damage to monsters, they put them at culling range, and then the MF character comes in as a culler and kills everything. So that will depend on the strategy. Now, if all of that group play does not interest you, and you wish to play as a solo, as a lone wolf, it is... I'm not gonna lie, very hard sometimes to achieve solo magic find, especially if you're going for hyper-juiced map, and if you're in League. Going 100% Delirium or 80% Delirium solo in League can require a pretty min-max build, and sometimes I think 100% Delhi, eh, it's gonna be a bit rough. In League Start, however, I 100% advise going against solo, until you have a Headhunter. Often solo players are going to start going MF solo once they achieve the headhunter stage. Now, if we're strictly talking about the amount of currency you're able to make on a normal scenario, so not league start, if you have your build that can run all the content possible, it is better to go solo in terms of currency. Group currency scaling and item scaling and rarity cannot beat the fact that you have to divide the loot in equal parts. However, in the early game, it is pretty much impossible to run the hardest content solo, which means going in a group will be the best decision for that. Now, Magic Find. Standard or League? Some players have pure hatred for Standard, and it's a pretty simple answer, never gonna run Standard. Why? 
they find that the economy is often going to be very still, so not much trading, nothing moving. Some items are worth a ton, but a lot of items are worth pretty much nothing. For example, tier 1 uniques in League can fetch for a good price, while in Standard, they are so common, they are probably the same price as a tier 5 unique. So this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of players prefer going for League. However, Standard does offer better possibilities in terms of Magic Find, and we're going to look at all that right now. MF in League uses a lot of unique items to be able to get item quantity and item rarity. Item rarity is still obtainable by rolling your items as a rare, but item quantity is a legacy mod, which means it does not roll on items anymore, on rare items. This means you're going to have to use unique items, and those magic find unique items are often going to be very generic, so they don't really help any build, and they have a low power level. They give bad stats. For example, if you look at the Sedima Touch, they give 4 to 8 fire damage, a bit of lightning damage, maximum energy shield, and item quantity. When you look at this, you might think, this was the gloves I had in Act 3. Well, that's basically what uniques are for item quantity and MF in League. This causes a lot of builds to have a lot of difficulty going into MF. Swapping to full-in MF gear is very, very hard because you will need very strong weapons and a very strong build to be able to run it. Not only must your build be strong, it must be very versatile. Because those are unique mods, that actually means that you cannot use other mods on gear. You can't really choose, which means if your build required three unique or four specific mods to actually work, if you want to go full MF or even partially MF, you might not actually be able to. So if you wish to choose a build for Magic Find in League, make sure that it is one that you like, and it must be versatile. One of the good reasons why Tornado Shot is used in MF is because a Tornado Shot works with a bow, a quiver, and a tree. Basically, that's it. You can replace all the rest of the gear as much as you want. To give you a good understanding of which build you can choose, try to look at builds that have multiple versions. The same example of Tornado Shot. Tornado Shot exists in the Omniscience version, it exists in Triple Elemental version, it exists in Physical to Coal conversion, it exists in Original Sin version. As you can see, this means it is a very versatile skill that can be used in multiple different ways. That would make it very good for Magic Find. That's why Tornado Shot is one of the main skills people use when playing Magic Find. Also, make sure that the build is good for clearing because you want more kills per hour, and if your build sucks at clearing, well then, no point of going for Magic Find. Magic Find in Standard gives you access to the strongest MF gear thanks to Legacy Modifier that can go up to 20% increased quantity on rare items, which means you're able to craft items, have crafted items with mods that you want on top of the increases in quantity and rarity. To give you an example, those boots were made by me and a another person in my discord and they're up for mirror service but you can see they pretty much look like normal omniscience tornado shot boots but they have the 20 percent quantity of item found this means you can have a more personalized build a stronger build as well as if you have the currency every single build could work we can't talk about magic fine without talking about loot filters Loot filters are often not going to be the priority of players. They're going to watch their video of, you know, Zazarin explaining how to download your first loot filter. You're going to go on filter blade up, up, okay, it's done. And you're going to forget about it for the rest of your life. You might just change it to a higher level of strictness once you reach end game, but that's kind of not it. A lot, and when I say a lot, is a lot of items are going to drop when you're running Magic Find. So it is important to know which item is better for you or not. And you don't want to waste time looking at items that aren't worth your time. As we know, the more time you spend not killing monsters, you're losing currency. Another good thing about loot filter is it actually just makes your game smoother. As you can see, this guy uh, trying to run a map with that amount of item is very hard on your computer and you will be bugging on top of the fact that it is visual clutter it, it will actually impact the performance of your game 
So try to make uh, a loot filter that is exactly for you. That's the best option. Make your own loot filter. This will guarantee that you have only items that you want when you're playing your game, right? So you're killing monsters. You're only going to see the items that you want. If you don't want to do that, I then suggest using a loot filter that is used by a player, a good player that uses the specific strategy you are doing because some strategy might have different loot filters. So it is important to have the loot filter that is perfect for what you're doing and what content you're doing at the difficulty that you're doing. There's going to be different loot filters when you're on low level than when you're on a high level. So you've seen this whole video and you still want to do magic fine. Well, here are hard truth and what to expect when going into magic fine. There is three ways to scale your loot in the game and it's, they're scaled in order of return per investment. The first one and the best return on investment is going for harder content. Going from that tier one map or even acts, right? From going from the acts to your tier one map, there's a significant loot uh, bonus. Then going from tier one to tier 16, you're gonna have a significant better loot. The second best way to scale your loot is gonna be by running the same content, but quicker. This means less death, faster clearing. It will depend on the play style and the build a lot. Some builds, no matter how much currency you put, are limited in the way they run content. For example, Molten Strike armor stackers can cost dozens of mirrors. However, in a map, they aren't as strong as a Lightning Arrow Deadeye, which you could probably make for a 100 vine budget and still be by far better than the Molten Strike armor stacker. A lot of tools could help, for example, Headhunters, Mageblood, Rampage, Berserk, those are going to be the best things to help to run the content harder, uh, quicker, and more efficiently. Finally, the, le the least best way, so like the, the lowest return on investment way to make more loot is actually to add Magic Fine. This means it is your last priority in your build. The increase in revenue per map is good. However, there's going to be such a drop in your build power, clear and survivability that it is often not even worth it. So you need to make sure to have similar capabilities to a non magic fine play uh, build when running the specific content. However, for that, you will actually need to invest quite a lot. So what I suggest is actually just run your normal build to a minimum and the minimum is a strict minimum of 50 div. 50 div is considered the budget of the budgets of Magic Find. And then slowly add Magic Find to it. Don't go fully Magic Find. Don't forget the rest of your item as well. For example, your weapons, your tree, and the rest of your general gear. It is often disregarded that, oh, I'm just going to invest all of my budget into Magic Find stuff. But no, please don't forget the rest of your gear because you will only put magic fine one step at a time. A lot of players fell in, fall in the trap of paying all the magic fine gear that they need, putting it on, and then trying to do the content they used to do with ease, and then they find out that they can't even run the content anymore. If they need to start running content that requires less difficulty, so easier content, well, you're going to lose a lot of currency because Doing harder content is the best way to scale actual currency items and drops. So what I suggest is you buy a single MF gear, you put it in your build, you test it. If you can run the content pretty much on a similar power level, then you can might, you, you could go for an upgrade again. However, if you put that item and you see that your build's power has dropped so much, take it off, go back to the item you had, get better gear, and then add that magic find uh, build or piece of gear again. Another hard truth and what to expect is during league start, it is better to like not even touch magic find. In my opinion, before week three, it is not worth going for magic find unless you're going to do group plays with an aura bot. Although you will have to divide your earnings, you'll be able to do so much harder content with a lot more speed than if you were going to do it alone and it is often going to be better than going for solo. 
So what are the three important points you should get is going magic find should be a decision you must take carefully and at the end. Many players rush to transition, doing it early on their build or not being strong enough, which equals to a bad experience. Third, you should never do a full transition, so a one-shot transition from 0 MF to you know 150, unless you have a headhunter and a nice budget on top of it. Yes, magic find is expensive. Okay? It is not something any player can do just like that by just adding random items into their build and getting mirrors to drop. No, it is, you know, for some, Headhunter is the highest currency they can ever achieve in the game. And for some, Headhunter is a budget, a budget item because they make so much more. But in the real like world compared to normal players, yes, Magic Find is an expensive thing to get into. This does not mean you cannot be partially magic fine. Let's say your build is worth 100 divine. You don't necessarily need 100% quant. You might have just 40% quantity, have your normal build, and be half quant, half magic fine, half not. Hybrid also works. But when I was talking about headhunter, it's for the full transition. I think you should wait for headhunter for that. So commonly asked questions. First one being, is magic fine worth it? If your build is overkill for the content you run, yes. Going magic fine with a build that can only manage the content without the magic fine is a big no. Because once you go magic fine, you will lose so much power and the experience will be worse and you will pretty much make less currency than if you had your normal build. When should I get into magic fine? If you're not in a group, not before week three, I think is the best, and not before you get headhunter if you want a full transition. Is it expensive to get into magic fine? Yes. You can start going into MF before buying a headhunter, but I do suggest just keeping your currency until the headhunter because you can simply just invest in your build to make the content quicker and you will literally make more currency. Should I go full MF? I've kind of answered that question in the video, but if you have the budget of headhunter and more divs, yes. If not, do not. In terms of currency only, is it better to go in group or solo? If you have a viable and good MF build that can do the content you wish to farm, solo is always going to be the best option. Other trades off of going for magic fine. Yes, your build will suck. Compared to non magic fine characters, magic fine builds just are bad in all of those aspects. Whether it's DPS, survivability, speed, anything, magic fine is always going to be on a lower power level. This means if you want a build that is equally strong to your build, you're going to have to invest a lot more. Even in standard where you can make completely, completely broken magic find builds for the same budget, the normal build, the non MF build will always be stronger. Can a magic find boss or Uber magic find characters are made to be able to kill map bosses pretty easily. However, going for bosses and Ubers, for example, Exarch and Exa Uber Exarch, is gonna be quite hard. You might be able to do the normal Exarch, the normal bosses, so pinnacle bosses with a magic find character if it is well made. And if you know what you're doing, maybe, but it will be painful. For Ubers, forget about it. For the question, for that question in standard, anything is possible in standard. I've seen some standard play, uh, builds in magic find actually be able to pretty much instantly kill all the Ubers, but that, Again, it's just a question of currency. But in League, currency can't really bring you too much because you're kind of limited by those unique items. Should a beginner go into Magic Find? If you're new to PoE, especially if it's your new first League, no. Don't even touch Magic Find. In my opinion, it is better that you play the game, understand the game, get a good build and understand what a good build is. And then for the next League or the next one after that, you could try to go for Magic Find. If you're a new player to or a beginner to Magic Find, if you're a beginner to, sorry, Path of Exile, but it's not your first league, maybe it's your second, third, or you kind of play maybe 30 minutes a day, a few hours a week, I still don't suggest it. However, if you are a bit new, maybe it's your second league, but you know this league, you're going to grind your life. Well, maybe it might be a good decision to go for Magic Find. Are Magic Find builds tanky? No. In League, high or low budgets, they are not tanky. You can make them tanky. However, you're going to lose so much DPS 
that you're going to basically do no damage, have medium defense. That's just going to end up killing you all the time. Headhunter will pretty much take care of all the defensive issues and, you know, the lacking DPS. So concentrate on getting that item and then your build will function. Can you be tanky in standard? Yes, if you're rich enough. Now, to answer all of those questions, if on the difficulty of magic fine, they can all be answered by you getting an Ourobot. As we see, the difference between in having a non-Ourobot and having an Ourobot is day and night. However, some players don't want to always play or have their build completely rely on a Ourobot, so I can understand that. So you are convinced, 100%, you wish to make magic fine for this league or in standard. What are the builds I suggest? In league, I suggest the tornado shot. It's good in solo or group. Laning arrow, it's kind of like the budget version of the tornado shot. It can be solo or group. Blade vortex, which is very strong solo for group. Spark, pretty much duo is required if you want to run spark with an aura bot. And for the budget, you can go for the caustic arrow. However, I think it is very painful as an experience to run Caustic Arrow as a magic fine character, and I think it's just better to have a better clearing character that is non-MF than actually going for the Caustic Arrow MF budget. For standard, same thing, Trinitor Shot, Blade Vortex, pretty much every single thing that works in League will work in standard. There's also the Val Spammers. Val Spammers are one of the strongest, probably the strongest, actually they are the strongest magic fine characters in the game. You can do pretty much all the content. Well, you can do all the content in solo. You can also do it in group. The whole, the only problem when you do Val spam with group is you need to make sure everybody in the group can actually handle your build because you shoot so many things that a lot of people will actually crash. Already the fact that going for group play in a juiced map will make the performance of your game pretty shit. You're going to have the one FPS experience if you run with a Val spammer. So pretty much anything in standard with a big budget can work for magic find. Now, real talk guys, there are often two reasons why people will go for magic find. It's either going to be for fun or it's going to be for currency. People that do it for fun usually don't have much expectations. They just wish to run magic find. You know, they run their content. They're often going to have good enough builds. They're happy with their build. Might as well just go for magic find to add that extra bonus. However, a lot of players are doing it for currency. And when you're doing it for currency, your expectations can sometimes be too much for what they are or for what the strategy is. A lot of people think that Magic Fine is the get rich quick strategy. They see a video from some random ass YouTuber telling them how they drop multiple mirrors and they think it's going to work. It's basically like those 13 years old kid watching finance gurus on TikTok telling them how rich they can be if they go into their course. It's the same thing, right? You're going to believe that you're going to get so many drops. You're going to copy his bill, copy his strategy, and then you're going to end up understanding that, yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. You're actually going to have to spend a lot of time grinding a lot of time in your maps and like multiple hours if you want to have dozens of mirrors at the end of the league. Magic Find is not the best strategy in terms of currency making in the game. However, it is very fun if you like to only play, if you like to play the game and wish to earn more from it, it is worth it. Okay? So it is important, guys, to run the content that you want, run the build that you like because the more you like the game, the more you're going to play the game. And the more you're going to play the game, the more currency and loot you're going to get. If you hate your Magic Fine experience, you're not going to make as much currency that if you love your new build that you made and you start running 10 times more content. On that note, I want to give a special thanks to Ethan, Garrett, and Xalandra who are awesome, experienced Magic Fine players who, from my Discord who actually helped me construct this PowerPoint and review it. So that's the end for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide. And if you do try out Magic Find, please let me know in, your, in the comments or in the Discord how you liked it and if the build was useful. So on that note, guys, have fun.